Tomorrow, author Jesse Fink, his latest ACDC book is about Bon Scott. And who else might stop by? It's, that was very surprising. Very cool. So, Majewski spoke to Tony Canal of this band last week. Yeah. Um, so, Dream Car, obviously, is... Um, we've had them on the show before. Uh, Tony, Adrian, and Tom from No Doubt, minus Gwen. But they did have the platinum-haired, newly platinum-haired Alanis Morissette join them for um, the Chester Bennington uh, celebration a few weeks ago. And Tony, um, along with uh, Moby, is uh, the co-founder of the Circle V Fest, and, and Mo only plays once in a while now, and he's going to do his only live performance along with Dream Car, uh, November eighteenth. And I just I just have to say, I mean, Tony Canal is one of those human beings. When I got off the phone with him, my whole heart was like swelling. I was just like, this is. He's a very a positive good, guy. He's a very positive, positive person. Guy. He's a good person. And even Matt, Matt was producing the segment, and Matt was like, if he loves animals this much, just think about how much he loves his children, how much he loves his wife, like how much he loves the world. He's one of those guys that I just don't think he'd say anything bad about anyone. He's great. And really good rock stories, too. Tony Canal on Feedback. You're listening to Feedback on Volume 106, and today we're checking in with friend of the show, someone I love dearly, Tony Canal of Dream Car, and no doubt about his Circle V Fest on November 18th at the Regent Theater in Los Angeles. I'm psyched to talk to you about this, but can we just start a little by talking about the Chester Bennington tribute that you were part of with Tom and Adrian, because it was so wonderful and it touched me so deeply. Yeah, that was a really beautiful, heartfelt night. Um, you know, uh, we've no doubt had played with Lincoln Park many, many years ago as part of their um, disaster relief fund that they do. And um, <clears throat> so we've, we've kept in touch with those guys. So um, when Chester passed, uh, they reached out to us and they asked us if we'd want to be part of the tribute. And um, we said, of course, yes. And uh, it was, it was um, like I said, a beautiful night and really, really well put together and a, a really great tribute in honor of Chester's wife. And, um, you know, we got to play, and uh, our friend Alanis Morissette joined us. Yeah, how did that come about? We, um, you know, Davey wasn't available um, that evening, so we were like, well, we want to play. And the person that we all thought of was Alanis, and we reached out, and she – fortunately said yes and so we got together and rehearsed with um some of the lincoln park guys and we you know we we learned this song called castle of glass which is one of lincoln park's songs and um went up and did it on friday night and i mean i've i've you know i've known alanis for many many years our bands crossed paths back in the 90s and and, and onwards and um, but that was the first time we've actually shared the stage together. And you know she's such an incredible artist, and songwriter, and vocalist, and person. And it was just ser seriously like it was an honor to to be part of that tribute, and it was an honor to be on stage with Alanis. Well, I don't know if you realize this, but watching um, via YouTube, and a lot of people who were there at the show said the same thing: that when you guys walked out, and Alanis with her platinum blonde hair walked out, there was a bunch of people who thought oh my god it's a no doubt reunion for a minute did that cross your mind backstage like uh oh she's got this blonde hair people are gonna think this no that didn't cross <laughs> my mind and i hadn't even heard that till you mentioned that right now no that wasn't at all on our minds yeah you know, we were just like let's not mess up <laughs> <laughs> well i have to say that was the beauty of of the show was that the perfection was in the imperfections. It it didn't feel to me, you know, back in the day we watched the Freddie Mercury tribute concert and you all of those iconic sure. things that we remember, you know, George Michael and Bowie. But what, this was, it, Shinoda felt almost like he was winging it. And there was something so beautiful about how we were, you know, we were like trying to feel better as he was trying to feel better. And it was all in, about the music. Do you know what I mean? Was that the vibe you got? I know. I, that's exactly the vibe we got. I mean, I think we were, they were going through the healing process and this was part of their process. And we just got to be invited to it and witness it and be part of it. 
And I mean, being in that venue, being at the Hollywood Bowl with 17,000 people and, and feeling that energy was something really special. It's something I'll never forget, you know. And like I said, it's, it's something that we're really honored to be part of. And um, to, to kind of go through that, watch them at rehearsals going through that healing process and trying to figure out, you know, how are we going to do this and what's next was pretty, um, pretty powerful to watch. Yeah. Well, I watched from home and it, it was extremely powerful. It was beautiful. I'm so glad you were a part of it. Um, so I'm glad now that you're going to also be a part of the Circle V Fest. This is the second year in a row, and I know that you're a co-founder uh, along with Moby and Mercy for Animals, Nathan, right, Nathan Runkel? That's correct. It's the, the whole Mercy for Animals crew, um, Susan and Ari and Nathan and Nick, yeah, and, 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 and their whole entire team, yes. Well, can you talk about the mission behind this? And, and you know, you don't have to be vegan, and you uh, y- you can just love music and want to go, right? That's what it is. I mean, it's a celebration, um, and it's an effort to make people aware of, of animal rights issues, but also welcome people into this amazing vegan community we have here in Los Angeles through music and food and these this panel of incredible uh, speakers um, who are all speaking about different subjects in the animal rights world. So for us, it's about welcoming people in, and, you know, I wasn't vegan my whole life. I've been vegan for five and a half years, and there was a process to get to that point. And for me, it was about education. So for me, a really big, big, important component of Circle V is the educational aspect, letting people know what animal agriculture does, obviously, to animals, um, to the planet, and to our bodies. And, you know, there's, there's so many different aspects to animal, I mean, to, uh, to, to animal rights. And I think this educational component of Circle B is really, really important. And of course we have the musical component, which is, you know, let's have an awesome concert. So it's going to be us dream car with Moby and Waka Flocka and Reggie Watts and Rory. Um, so there's, a, there's, there's that too. And then also there's the food component, you know, letting people experience all these amazing vegan food vendors you know i i always say this we live on the east side of los angeles and we can go to it los angeles is so forward thinking and we're really fortunate that we can go to a different vegan restaurant like every night for a month and never hit the same place there's so many great options for us and so we've invited a lot of these places to come and be part of circle v and so you know people can walk around and try different foods and and just see how much we've progressed in the vegan world with options and um and it's just you know the whole day like we did it last year and it was it was a, a really awesome day and i and i'm looking forward to to this year so you know moby's been my vegan jedi master for almost two decades now how did the two of you become friends did you bond over like your mutual love of bad brains or something like that <laughs> Um, you know, we see each other at events, um, uh, animal rights events in L.A. It's, you know, there's a, there's a pretty strong vegan animal rights community in L.A. So we would see each other at shows. We would see each other at, at you know, just galas. And, yeah, we just kind of um, got to know each other. And um, obviously we had met a long time ago when Gwen had guested on his Southside song. That's right, um, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, but we... You know, just being part of the music world and and knowing each other from from that too. So, um, yeah, when it was you know a couple of years ago when we put this together for the first time, it was just kind of um, it just kind of happened very organically, and it was just like, oh, let's let's give this a shot and see what happens. So let's talk about Dream Car real quick because uh, you know one of my favorite concerts of 2017, you guys, and also one of my favorite albums. Um, what do you, what do you see? For the future, I mean, could there be more dream car to come? Um, yeah, I, I think so. You, look, we made this record. We're really proud of it. We had a great time making it, and we've had a great time touring it and playing shows. We just did a, a handful of festivals over the last few weeks. And every time we're on stage together, we're having a great time. So I would love to continue and, and keep making music and doing shows. Um, you know, we everybody also, also has so much other stuff going on so it is about scheduling and that's um one thing that we've gotten pretty good at and um 
but yeah, I, I definitely see more music coming from us. I know we have more music that we want to share. So um, I'm looking forward to at some point getting in the studio and working on some new stuff. Well, that's what I seem to have gotten from the Chester Bennington tribute was, you know, instead of being so locked into this idea of, okay, who's going to replace Chester or, you know, does no doubt have to have Gwen or do you need to have Davey? Like, I just feel like if you make great music, we can, we can do this in, in different groups and different projects. Cause it's not like the old music business anymore. Do you know what I mean? It's not like you're out to sell 10 million copies because that doesn't happen. So why can't you just make new, new great music, whatever way it comes? Well, I think you're, you're totally right. And especially for Tom, Adrian and myself, like we've been playing together for almost 30 years together. Um, you know, no doubt is celebrating its 30th year this year. So there is, um, there's a lot of stuff that we've done and it's been kind of achieved and experienced together. And I think we're at the point in our lives where, especially for the three of us, like we, you know, we're, we're, we're dads and we have that part of our lives going on. We love to get on stage and play music together. So I think it, that can take shape in so many different ways, whether it's dream car or whether it's no doubt, or whether it's, you know, getting on stage with Alanis Morissette and all these other opportunities that come up and and all of them are good. And I don't think that we think about it, like like you said, the, the music industry has changed so much. I don't think we think about it in those kind of black and white terms that kind of define things prior to, you know, this new world. Um, now it's just about, for us, it's about having fun and expressing ourselves creatively. It's funny you mentioned 30 years, you know, with no doubt. When you guys got up there, I was like, wow, they're the veterans now. Like, all of a sudden, I felt so old. <laughs> I was like, they're the veterans. And I actually went um, on a, a vacation a few weeks ago to a place called the Stanford Inn in, in Northern California, which is a vegan resort. Yes. It's insane, yes. Tony. You need to go there. But there was a couple that I took a cooking class with, and they said they were from Orange County. And I went, Tragic Kingdom. <laughs> you you put them on the map. <laughs> well, circling back to um, the Circle V Fest that you were having on November 18th at the Regent Theater in L.A. Um, mm -hmm. will, do you, I know it's Moby's only live show of the year. D do you think there'll be any cross, like do you, any crossing streams there, as they say? Might you guys perform together? Are you talking with them about that? Wow, we haven't discussed that yet. I know Moby and I are doing a radio performance, some acoustic radio performance coming up um, right before Circle V. I don't know the details of that yet, but I know that's somewhere on the calendar. But wow, it would be awesome to get on stage and do something together. So um, I think you just planted the seed for that idea, and I will talk to him about it this week. <laughs> well, yes, and, and, you, and it should be something either hardcore or new wave, if I may. <laughs> suggest <laughs> or joy division <laughs> i love it i love it i would love to cover a bad brain song with Moby. <laughs> i know he would love to as well um well and then i just have to ask do you think gwen will come to the show has she been supportive of dream car um you know she's been supportive on social media i don't know what her schedule is and if she's in town for that show um but um yeah I, you know maybe she's invited of course, always. Yeah. Oh, well, I love, you know, one of my favorite songs that she's ever done is the, is the one, um, you know we're cool, because I knew you were right. as soon as I heard that song. Oh, well, thank you so much, Tony. My husband and I are really trying to get out there for the Circle V Fest this year um, because we want to support the cause and we want to see Dream Car again. <laughs> oh, thanks, Lori. Well, I hope you guys can make it. We'd love to have you up as our guests and uh yeah, uh, thank you so much for your time today. Okay, now now, now go find a song to record with Moby, <laughs> to play with Moby at Circle V. <laughs> All right, thank I you so it. much, sweetheart, and talk soon, All okay? Right, Take care of yourself. You okay, too. Talk soon. Bye. Bye.